Welcome to our video on the history of the Asian financial crisis. In this segment, we will explore the causes and early stages of this significant economic event that shook the Asian region in the late 1990. The Asian financial crisis, also known as the Asian contagion, was a severe economic downturn that originated in Southeast Asia in July 1997. It quickly spread to other Asian countries and even had global implications. To understand the crisis, we need to go back to the early 1990s. During the early 1990s, many Asian countries experienced rapid economic growth, often referred to as the Asian miracle. Countries like Thailand, Indonesia, South Korea and Malaysia were attracting significant foreign investments and experiencing impressive GDP growth rates. This economic boom was fueled by factors such as low labor costs, abundant natural resources, and favorable government policy. Foreign investors were attracted to these emerging markets, pouring billions of dollars into the region. However, beneath the surface, there were some underlying vulnerabilities that would later contribute to the crisis. One of the main factors was the excessive borrowing by both governments and corporations in Asian countries. These countries were borrowing heavily to finance infrastructure projects, real estate developments, and industrial expansion. The borrowed funds were often denominated in foreign currencies, primarily the U.S. Dollar, dollar. As the economies grew, so did the demand for imports, particularly capital goods and technology. This led to significant trade deficits in many Asian countries, which had to be financed by borrowing even more. The situation worsened when the U.S. Federal Reserve began raising interest rates in 1994. This led to a strengthening of the U.S. dollar and increased the burden of debt repayment for Asian countries. Despite these warning signs, the Asian economies continued to attract foreign investments and their stock markets experienced a speculative bubble. Investors were enticed by the high returns and seemingly unstoppable growth. However, in mid-1997, the Thai bait came under intense pressure due to speculative attacks by currency traders. The Thai government, unable to defend the baht's value, was forced to devalue the currency and abandon its fixed exchange rate regime. This triggered a chain reaction across the region as investors began to lose confidence in other Asian currencies and started withdrawing their investments. The contagion spread rapidly, leading to a domino effect of currency devaluations and stock market crashes. The crisis had devastating effects on the affected countries. Stock markets plummeted, currencies depreciated and businesses faced bankruptcy. Many individuals lost their jobs and poverty rates soared. In the next segment, we will delve deeper into the consequences of the Asian financial crisis and the measures taken to stabilize the region's economies. Join us as we continue our journey through the history of the Asian financial crisis. Welcome back to our video on the history of the Asian financial crisis. In the previous segment, we explored the causes and early stages of the crisis. In this segment, we will examine the consequences of the crisis and the measures taken to stabilize the affected economies. The Asian financial crisis had severe consequences for the affected countries. The crisis led to a sharp contraction in economic activity, causing a significant decline in GDP growth rates. Many businesses faced bankruptcy and unemployment rates soared. The crisis also had a significant impact on the banking sector. Many banks had lent heavily to corporations and individuals, and when the crisis hit, they faced a wave of loan defaults. This led to a severe banking crisis with many banks on the brink of collapse. The affected countries had to take urgent measures to stabilize their economies and prevent a complete collapse. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, played a crucial role in providing financial assistance and advice to the affected country. The IMF provided loans to the affected countries, conditional on implementing structural reforms and austerity measures. These measures included reducing government spending, increasing taxes, and implementing financial sector reforms. The IMF's assistance was controversial, with some critics arguing that the conditions imposed by the IMF worsened the crisis 
and led to social unrest. However, others argue that the imp's assistance was necessary to prevent a complete economic collapse. The affected countries also had to undertake significant reforms to address the underlying vulnerabilities that contributed to the crisis. These reforms included improving corporate governance, strengthening financial regulation, and reducing reliance on foreign borrowing. The reforms were challenging and often faced resistance from vested interests. However, they were necessary to prevent a repeat of the crisis and to build more resilient economies. Over time, the affected countries recovered from the crisis and implemented significant reforms that improved their economic resilience. The crisis also had global implications, leading to increased scrutiny of international financial systems and the role of the IM. In conclusion, the Asian financial crisis was a significant economic event that had severe consequences for the affected country. The crisis led to significant reforms and changes in the affected economies, and its legacy continues to shape economic policies and institutions today.